Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Joffy Noodle Legs here today. Uh, doing something a little bit different today. So, uh, doing a music uh, um, video today because I've not done one for a while. And today we're looking at one of my favourites. Absolutely amazing bloke. I've met him a few times. Always welcoming. Great to talk to. Always extremely friendly. And we always have a little hug and stuff when I see him. I've not seen him for a few years uh, on the person, you know, bumping into him, but I've seen him in concert and stuff. Um, and of course, I'm talking about the genius and underrated Mark Almond. Now, I've been a fan of Mark Almond's, I can't remember since, it must be 1980, 81, um, when I brought um, Soft Cell's Mutant Moments EP, which was in the indie charts before they released any sort of hits and I brought that and I really liked his voice it was amazing and then they went on to make uh, some like classic hits in the early 80s um, and his career has been so varied um, it, it's genius it, there's no one else like him the only one people kind of like him is, is is David Bowie with this sort of um, the sort of contrast and range of his career He's covered all sorts of different genres um, because of his love of music. Um, he writes, uh, he's an amazing songwriter. He's written some amazing songs and he does loads of cover versions. Um, and I think that's due to, down to his pure passion and love for music and songwriters. There are certain songwriters um, that he absolutely adores. Um, Jacques Brel, Scott Walker. You know, all these amazing songwriters that he absolutely adores. And he covers quite a few of their songs throughout their career. Um, and, and, of course, his biggest, one of his biggest hits was a was a, um, <laughs> all his number ones, I think, have been uh, cover versions. Um, because he just loves music. Um, but not only does he do great cover versions, he writes his own songs, which are incredible and amazing. Um, he's gone through so many changes in his career. I mean, he 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 was and liked by so many people. You got to think he's he hit the new romantic scene, didn't he? With soft sell, and then he hit the goth sort of scene with the um, Mark and the Mambas at the same sort of time. He was running soft sell and Mark and the Mambas at the same time. In the latter part of soft sell um, demise and their sort of early demise obviously that they're still doing stuff now but back then they sort of split up around about 83 um so he was doing mark and the mambas at the same time which was a more gothic spanish sort of influence kind of um music and he'd done a lot of sort of like piano work and stuff like that absolutely amazing and then when he went solo he kind of went into a sort of um trashy sort of bluesy kind of um um alleyway sort of uh music like that you know with his album vermin nermin with the willing sinners and that to be honest was my favorite music period of mark coleman's was mark coleman and the willing sinners when he did the vermin and ermin and the story of johnny albums which are fantastic and obviously he did uh mother fist and then after then he sort of went he sort of stripped right down to uh just him and, and martin watkins on the piano and done like loads of sort of tours with just sort of like uh, of love songs cover versions and scott walker songs and uh jack brell songs and he stripped it right down and he'd done stuff like that and then he came back again in the sort of uh late 80s to the early 90s with his band La Magia which were, and then had some of his biggest hits and made probably one of his most successful sort of um, pop albums called The Stars We Are uh, which was a fantastic album uh, had some great tracks on there had the hit singles obviously Stars We Are uh, and obviously uh, something's gotten hold of my heart but I loved there's certain songs on the album I love like The Kept Boy I absolutely love that song. He's done some amazing songs on that album. And then he went on to do a sort of more a stra extravagant sort of... Um, uh, it's going to sound really bad, but campy kind of album with Enchanted. Um, it was had a very sort of, um, I don't know, a bit of a sort of Frenchy sort of uh, sound to it with accordions and and stuff like that. But, but it was quite... Um, 
yeah, and he was very glitter and sort of like and but that's cool. But this is Mark. He can do what he wants when he wants to do it, you know. And then he sort of evolved round again, and he did albums that were a bit more. He sort of um did some more stuff with Martin Watkins in the early nineties, and then he went and did his massive. 12 Years of Tears show at the Royal Albert Hall, which I attended. That was an incredible show. Uh, it was amazing. And he sort of covered all of his career up to them, from Soft Cell to Mark and the Mambas to his solo stuff. And he had an album out then called Tenement Symphony, which had the hits uh, Days of Pearly Spencer on and, and things like that, which was another massive hit for him. Another cover version. But yeah, it, it was fantastic. And then he sort of took it all down a bit and sort of started to do work with Neil X from um, uh, Zig Zig Sputnik and, and bands like that. He he started to do a bit more rockier sort of. Although his albums that he did with him, Fantastic Star and that were were kind of um, still had that sort of sleazy kind of feel to them. It still had a bit of a more rocky feel to it. So that was cool. And lately he's been doing stuff with uh, Neil X under the name of The Loveless, which again, it's almost like a sort of indie kind of band sound, which is fantastic. Um, and then when when he's done stuff with, with Neil X, he's also gone on to do, he did a couple of albums of Russian folk songs, which were really good. He went on to do um, a, an amazing album, album uh, Up Up uh, uh, Open All Night, something like that. I loved the album. Fantastic. It had a little bit of a trip-hop feel to it. And he had a few guest singers on there, like Susie Sue. And it was fantastic. And he's still releasing albums now. He's done albums with George Holland. He's still releasing solo albums now and doing stuff with people that have done soundtracks and all sorts of things. Absolutely amazing. Why he hasn't done a James Bond theme song yet, I don't know. But anyway... I'm waffling, isn't I? But I've taken seven minutes talking about giving you a little bit of background, a little bit of Mark's career. I've been a fan since the early years. The first time I saw Mark was with Soft Cell in 1982. They did a tour with the, the album The Art of Falling Apart. I'm sure it was 82. Could have been the end of 81, but I'm sure it was 82. And I saw them at Hammersmith Palais. And then I saw him um, again with The Willing Sinners, he did a couple of shows at Hampstead Palais around the Vermin and Ermine time. And then I went to see him at the Astoria uh, with the Willing Sinners and stuff like that. And saw him there with Lamarge. And seen him quite a few times. Seen him at Brixton Academy at charity event. He did like a charity thing at um, Brixton Academy where he came with Martin Watkins. And they did like a 40-minute a, a set. I've seen him at, like I said, the Royal Albert Hall. I've seen him at Shepherd's Bush. I've seen him at the Roundhouse. I've seen him here at Hebden Bridge. I've, I've, I've followed the guy around for now pretty much since 80, 81. And I don't know how many times I've seen him now. Him and New Model Army are the two artists that I've seen the most in my um, sort of uh, music thing. So, and I've met Mark a couple of times, um, a few signings, and I've met him at a uh, outside the concerts while I'm waiting to go in. So I've bumped into him a few times and he always says hi and gives you a little hug. So it's always great to see him. So today I'm going to have a look at a couple of box sets of his. I've, um, these are quite... Uh, they've been out... One of them's been out a few years now. One of them's brand new. Uh, the one that's been out a few years is this one. Um, I've had this the, the day it came out. This is the Trials of Eyeliner. And this is a retrospect of his career. Uh, it's a really nice box set. And that's all the songs that are on it, guys. And I'll tell you now, that is just a touch of his career. Seriously, he's done so many albums. So many. There, there were times in the 80s and 90s, and early two, he was releasing an album, two albums a year sometimes. You know, and fantastic. And he's just relentless he's worked hard he deserves he's he's now got a knighthood and he's now sir mark Ullman, and he deserves that for his commitment to music and what he's created and this is like a retrospective of his career i've got every single album of his singly um but i brought this because it's good to have something that's got like a retrospective and it's also got a couple of songs on here i don't actually have 
Um, there's a couple of songs in here he's got with Anthony from Anthony and the Johnsons he sings on here, uh, which I don't have. So there is about two songs on there I don't have. So, um, and this is quite sought after now. I believe it's a long time out of print. Um, and it's quite sought after. And it's a really nice box. It comes in, it, it comes with uh, three sort of hardback books. And and they're all beautifully illustrated. All, all really amazingly illustrated. Um, so I don't know if we can show you anything here. We've got some amazing photographs of Mark. Isn't, isn't he lovely, eh? Absolute, he's an absolute diamond of a bloke. He's so he's a real sweetheart when you meet if you meet him. He's so nice and genuine and he's just so cool. Anyway, this, this gives you like a little introduction story to Mark Almond uh, about his career. It goes on about Soft Cell. There's an early photo of Soft Cell there. Um, it's it's just amazing. And then you've got loads and loads of photographs, all from the sort of Soft Cell era and all kinds of things going on in this book. It, it's it's an amazing book. Really, really cool absolutely love it so it comes with a really nice hardback book and then it comes with these two little sort of hardback cases with the cds in it so let me open it gently so nothing actually falls out this is one with the five cds in it okay and the other one lovely picture there really really nice such an amazing box set this and again this has got the other five um cds in it the history of his career and this is what this is it's a history of mark coleman's career uh, i believe it's between 1979 and 2016 yeah to 2016 so it covers his career hello mate We've got a little boy here he wants to say hello here he is here's sullivan Oh, hello everybody. He wants to say hello and show you his little reindeer. All right, mate. You're a good boy. So, yeah, it's like a, a retrospective of his career. And it's got songs from Soft Cell. It's got songs from uh, Mark and the Mambas, uh, Willing Sinners, La Marge, his solo stuff. Um, all of his other sort of things that he's been doing between that period. And it runs a bit like non-stop erotic cabaret. The songs tend to flow into each other, which is quite cool, but also quite annoying if you want to sort of pick out your favourite tracks for like a playlist on your uh, on, on on your MP3 or whatever. It can be quite annoying when all the songs sort of run into each other. But that's cool. Uh, it's really really good. Um, it's a really cool box set. I believe it's quite sought after now. Um, <clears throat> I think the cheapest I've seen this going for now is about 300 quid. Um, but I think, you know, most of the time it goes for about five. Um, but the cheapest I've seen is in 300. And that's with, like, things missing from it. Um, this is obviously complete. Um, and played just once. And even got still got my sticker on the front, which was on the cellophane, which I've taken off and I've put on the box because I like it to be complete. So... It's absolutely amazing, and the first disc sort of starts off with Soft Cell. As you can see, it's sort of like, I can't really show you um, on this, because it's like, um, but you can see how many songs there are on each disc. Sorry guys, just Sullivan just walking about. Absolutely fantastic. And I remember when this came out, Mark actually did a trailer for this. I saw a trailer for it on YouTube, presented by Mark Coleman, which is really, really cool. Really, really good. Love the box set. Um, if I'm going to score it, I'll score it 8 out of 10. It's amazing. But I think it's uh, just... I would like to have seen it broken down better, like a, a disc of Soft Cell, then a disc of Soft Cell live and demos, a disc of Mark and the Man, you know, Man but you know, like that. That's how I would have liked it. This is a bit, little bit all jumbled up quite a bit with, like, highlights. It does have these hits on it, obviously. Um, like all his famous songs, Tainted Love, everything like that, Bed Sitter, um, something's got on hold of my heart, it's got all that stuff on here, but I just like it to have been broken down just 
slightly more um, into it, sort of like, oh, it's just me, into it, sort of like, right thing. But that's still cool. Still an amazing box set. Really, really cool. And then I'm going to move on to the other box set I'm going to talk about. But I, it came out, came out this year. It was due to come out last year, but got put back a little bit. Sorry again, it's just Sullivan. Sullivan, what are you doing, darling? Come up here, baby. Come on. Oh, he's going to keep knocking the camera. Come on, baby. What are you doing down there? Come on. Up. Come on. He's just... Come on. Come on. Oh. There. Sit there. There you go. And it came out this year. And this is Mark Coleman's Alive Treasury of Song. This is, yet again, another 10-disc set. Um, this is produced by Cherry Red uh, Records. Um, so that's really, really cool. And what this is, guys, it's a live box set of live uh, concerts. It contains six albums over 10 discs. So some of the concerts are quite long. Um, I'll tell you what's in it. So, first of all, let's open it. So, it's a really nice box. Got, like, a little booklet with, like, all the sort of songs on it and a bit of each concert. I'll pop this down. It's like a sort of fold-out poster. And, and it tells you about, sort of, each concert, each album. And then it's got, like, a sort of, like, a little sort of a... Art montage, a picture of Mark there, which is cool. Um, and then it's got like six albums, and the albums are, I'll tell you them. So let me pop these in this way, so as I go along, we've got live at Liverpool Philharmonic Hall, 1992. This is just a solo um, concert with him and Martin Watkins on piano, so it's just a two-man show. Then we've got the infamous and famous 12 Years of Tears concert. This was his Royal Albert Hall concert. Two discs. And a gatefold sort of cover. First time, These are all first time on CD, guys. These have been Some of these are available on DVD. I have these on DVD. I've got this on DVD. Of course I'd have this because I was there. Um, and this is like the, the CD version of it. They did release back... Ages ago, when the, when the deep when the, when it came out on VHS before DVD days, um, they released it was like a highlight album, um, which had like probably about twelve to fourteen songs from it. This is the whole concert now, so it's really really cool. Excellent, twelve years of tears, and then we come to let me take them all out, guys. We come to Live at Leicester Cathedral in 2000. That's obviously Mark and Neil X. That's obviously going to be a... That's obviously just the two of those. Haven't listened to all these yet. I've listened to most of them. I'll tell you which is my favourite. Then we've got Live at the Union Chapel in 2000. Which was a really, really good concert. I was there. In fact, the last these last three, I was at all of them. Um, then we got one at the... A media theatre, which is his sin songs and torch and romance. Fantastic concert that was. Really good concert. And that was 2004. So, and I do have this on DVD. So I'm really glad to get this on a um, CD so I can just listen to it. Absolutely fantastic. Amazing set. Really, really cool, strong set. I think that's come out around the sort of time he did... Um, uh, open all night that sort of time and then we've got the blue gate field which is filmed at the wilton's music hall which is an old victorian music hall in the east end of london in shadwell uh, i was there <clears throat> another great concert another great night again i have this on dvd so it's good to have it now on cd so that's what pretty much what it is it's a lot of his dvd releases on CD for the first time, um, which is great, and it's great to have six live albums of Mark Goldman's. There's actually 75 songs on here, 
um, and they're all complete they're all complete concerts now my favorite one out of there well I'm not gonna say 12 years of tears my favorite one in there is actually number one the one with Martin Watkins because I love Mark with Martin Watkins shows just him and the piano because Mark is a performer he's not just a singer he's a performer and when he's singing his songs he performs his songs and you can feel it and you can and it makes you take in the song more and enjoy the song more um, and when he's singing a really sad song it makes you feel sad and when he's singing a happy song it makes you feel on top of the world he's got that ability he's got such a stage present that is just amazing i love him when he's with his band i love that 12 years of tears it's down as one of my favorite concerts i've ever been to but i'm putting that down the first one is my favorite um concert on this box set because it's him and martin watkins i wasn't at and i wasn't at that show it was at liverpool i believe it was like a warm-up show almost to the 12 years to tears um show it's like a, a few gigs they did before it and i wasn't there so again so that was quite cool to get one that i wasn't at this box set again i'm gonna score it eight out of ten because i think it's a missed opportunity although it's fantastic and amazing and great and this this is mark's career from 1992 to 2008 the thing why i say it's a missed opportunity because it's missed his career from like 1979 1980 and there were so many amazing concerts in that time um he's done loads of sort of like mark and the mamba shows uh he's done like the early soft cell shows that's where it's a missed opportunity i think if a, if it, they'd have put like a, a an an early soft cell show from like 1982 in there and maybe a mark and the mamba show from 83 84 it would have just completed this and just touched on his earlier part of his career, which although it's his probably, to me, it, it, he was at his most um, energetic then. He was more sort of like punky. He's not, he was not a punk artist, but he was kind of punky and, he, you know, he had that I don't care sort of attitude but his songs were brilliant and amazing and his performance was great and a willing sinner show would have absolutely killed this box set off would have made it absolutely spot on so cherry red let's have another box set 80 to 2000 to 1992 come on um yeah but i just think it's a little bit of a missed opportunity this catches mark in his vocal prime and that's great I think the early 90s and that, and the and the sort of late 80s, Mark, Mark was at his absolute best vocally. I think he released his best vocal. And when I've seen him in concert in those times, he was always, I come out in tears from hearing his voice. It was amazing. He's He is the best singer I've ever seen live. I've seen so many singers. I've seen David Bowie. I've seen Anthony. I've seen David Sylvian. But Mark Coleman is the greatest singer I've, I've actually ever seen live um, and it's fantastic because he fills the song and you feel the song as he sings it and and you, if he's singing a song like setting uh, a sleazy bar in France you feel like you're there you know he's got that sort of way about him uh, and it's just fantastic and he does a, such an array of cover versions and I think only he can because it suits his way, his genre. It suits who he is. He can do a whole album of cover versions, and he has. He's done Jacques Brel albums and stuff. Uh, he's done the album of the Russian folk songs. Only Mark could really probably get away with that uh, because of his love and his passion for music and the type of voice he's got. His voice is so versatile, it suits every genre. You know, dance music, rock music, punk, goth, uh, everything. It suits it. He's got, a, he's got his voice for everything. You know, jazz. I love a great, great jazz album of him doing jazz covers with a piano, bass. I would love that. And, and a snare drum. That would be good. So come on, Mark. And that's two box sets of Mark Almond. 
any of you fans of Mark Common, let me know down below what you think of his uh, of his music. I mean, he he's he's touched every sort of genre, so he will have done something you like. You've just got to find which album it is, because there's so many. <laughs> there's so many albums. He's done so many, and they're all fantastic. I mean, Soft Cell broke up in the sort of early 80s, but they've reformed and done a few albums in the throughout the career, uh, throughout his career, and um, but they're good, but they don't have that same energetic and sort of uh, feel that these albums have. Um, obviously, because sound um, sort of like studios have, have sort of advanced since they come out, but they have something that's unique to it. Uh, 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 although it's pop music, it's still kind of raw, you know, and he always had a little bit of a punky feel to his music, like Frustration and songs like that, and Youth. I mean, fantastic songs. And they all had this sort of like punky, downbeat, depressing part to it, which I loved. And that's why I liked him so much, because although he does some great pop songs, they're all quite quite depressing, actually, what he's singing about. And that's what I really like. Guys, check him out if you've not got any... These box sets... Probably difficult to pick. I wouldn't pick them up if you've not got anything of Mark Holman. I would probably go have a look see what compilations are available of his and maybe pick up some, uh, um, or pick up Soft Cell's early albums, Non-Stop Erotic Cabaret and The Art of Falling Apart, and then go on to a few solo albums, Stars We Are, if you're just getting into sort of Mark Holman's sound. But he's genius, guys. Check him out. I'll see you soon.